let's say you just want to evaluate this model. So here you just, you have a value, here you have n things that you have to add up, and here, even though it goes from j equals i plus one to n, um, in terms of computational complexity, this is still, this has like order, this is uh, um, polynomial complexity. Um, because this sum um, goes up till n and this sum also goes up till n. Basically the complexity here is n squared. And so what that means is that, um, and n is the number of columns, and as you see here, there's a column for each user and for each movie. Um, and so as time goes on, you're going to get more columns in this data set. Um, but you, and, and even, even if, like, even ignore that, even if you had like a static um, table, like this table still like it needs to be, it needs to have a lot of columns um, because all of these regions are sparse. And so, as a result there, um, the thing is, the number of computations um, grows on the order of n squared, where n is the number of columns. So, if you have a lot of columns, then the number of calculations you need to do to evaluate this model grows very rapidly. Um, and so, this can be very... Um, difficult and very computationally expensive to evaluate, which is not good um, because doing calculations costs time and money. Um, so you want to try to minimize these things. However, there's something very interesting here, um, which is that um, the complexity is o is um, on the order of k times n squared, and I forgot to mention the k there. Um, but that makes sense because when you take the dot product of vi and vj, you're taking a sum from f equals 1 to k, and so there's a factor of k in there as well. Um, k generally isn't going to change, um, but still, you still have this com complexity. But reformulating it drops to linear runtime, and it's linear with respect to n. And th that's what lemma 3.1 states. The model equation of the factorization machine can be computed in linear time. And this is really a massive improvement. Um, and so, let me see here. I think, so, so let's, so here is the, here's the proof of it. And let's go through this in a little bit more detail. Um, I'm personally someone who likes to include more steps um, in calculations than our sometimes included in papers and I think that I think it makes sense because like in a paper you're trying to condense space and if there are calculations that the reader can do you want to let them do it um, but I think it would be nice to be able to sort of take a paper and like read it from top to bottom without having to take out like um, a pet like a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil and do your own calculations um, now, if you want to really understand it, you should, but I don't think that should be necessary for everyone reading the paper. And so that's why I'm going to do it. Um, so the first step here is we take this sum. Uh, this sum here can be broken up like this. And this was not very intuitive to me at first. It makes sense now just because I've written it out, but let's actually, what I want to do is I actually want to write out an example of this. Um, because I think that will make it very clear what's happening. So let's just take um, and let's let's ignore the dot product for now because that's just an additional sum um, that sort of can be evaluated on its own. But let's just take the sum from i equals one. Let's take n equals three. Sum from i equals one to three. Sum from j equals i plus one to three of x i times x j. So this is going to be, all right, so um, let's see here, when I, e here, I'm going to write this equal sign here. So when I equals 1, we're going to get the sum from J equals, so 1 plus 1 is 2, so J equals 2 to 3 of X1, because I equals 1, XJ, plus the sum from J equals 
So for when i equals 2, we get the sum from j equals 3 to 3 of x2, xj plus, and then I'll still write out um, when i equals 3, it's the sum from j equals 4 to 3 of x3, xj. And so this first sum is going to be x1, x2 plus x1, x3. And the second sum, well, j equals 3, so we're only considering j equals 3. So it's going to be x2 times xj, which is x3. And then this last sum here, well, 4 is greater than 3, so you don't do any sum here, so you, we just ignore this. And so this is what the sum looks like when n equals 3. All right, but what does, so, but here, let's, what we want to do is we want to get something that looks like sum from i equals 1 to n, sum from j equals 1 to n of this thing. So what does it look like when we take um, the sum from i equals 1 to 3, sum from j equals 1 to 3, xi, xj? All right, so then what we do is... Um, this would be when i equals 1, we have sum from j equals, well, we don't even need to write this out, because when i equals, when i when i equals 1, we have j equals 1, j equals 2, j equals 3. So it would be x1, because that's i, times j equals 1 is x1. So, so then x1, x2, plus x1, x3. So that's what the sum looks like when i equals 1. We get j equals 1, which is here, j equals 2, which is here, and j equals 3, equals here, which is here. And then we have the case when i equals 2. And so then we will have x2, x1, plus x2, x2, plus x2, x3. And then we have when j equals, or when i equals 3. So then we have x3, x1, x3, x2 plus x3, x3. All right, and so what this looks like is this is 2 times x1, x2, plus x1, x3, plus x2, x3. Because if we look over here, we get, um, whenever i and j are different, we get xij and xji. So we get x1, 2, and x2, 1, we get x1, 3, and 3, 1, we get 2, 3, and 3, 2. And so for each of them, we get two of them. And then what's left is the terms where you have xi squared. So we get plus x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared. All right, so if we want to get from here, if, if we want to take this second sum and make it look like the first sum, what we need to do is we need to divide it by 2 because this on the inside here, this stuff is equal to this stuff. So we want to isolate this. And how would we isolate this? Is First we have to divide by 2 and then we have to subtract off this stuff. And once we divide by 2, what we're subtracting is 1 half times this sum. And so then when, you, when, you, when we look at these equations, that's exactly what's happening here. If, we're, if we take the sum, when you take the sum, you're taking, um, you have this inner product of vi and vj times xi times xj, and you have, you sum up these terms, and each, any time i and j, um, whenever i and j have different values, you, that term appears only once. And so we get the same thing here because this sum you get um, for any time i and j are different, you get the term twice. And so you need to divide by one half. Um, but that's not the only thing you get from the sum. You also get those square terms and they've already been divided by two. So what you need to do, so you need to get rid of those, i.e. you need to subtract one half times all of those square terms. All right, so that's this step. And then what we do is we just, um, this is just writing out the dot products right here, um, like writing out the dot products as sums. 
Um, and then um, just because you can move summations around um, when they're is particularly when they're finite, we can bring this sum from f equals one to k outside. Um, but there's another thing that happens here, and this is what's really key, is that this sum from i equals one to n, sum from j equals one to n of x of this thing, it can be factored out as the multi as the product of two separate sums that end up being the same exact thing. And so what what are we like what what allows us to do this? Basically what the the fact that this is or the the mathematical property that this is using is the sum from i equals 1 to n of ai times the sum from j equals 1 to n of bj is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n sum from j equals 1 to n of ai bj and that's that's really what's happening here um, so here instead of ai you would have vif xi and instead of bj you would have vjf xj and then it breaks up like this and if we wanted to show an example of why this works um, i'll just do this really quickly we take again the example of n equals three we take x1 plus x2 plus x3 and we multiply it by itself. Then let's see here. The, we basically just have, it's like foiling, but there's more. You have to take every, um, every entry in the first one, in, in the first um, term, and every entry in the second term, multiply them together, and then add all of the resulting things. So we, x1 needs to be combined with everything. So we get x1, 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 x2, x1, x3. So it would be x1, x1, plus x1, x2, plus x1, x3. Then we do the same thing with x2 over here. So this would be plus x2, x1, plus x2, x2, plus x2, x3. And then finally with the um, x3 here, we get plus x3, x1, plus x3, x2, plus x3, x3. Three. All right, but we did this already. Um, we showed, like above, we did the same exact calculation, and this is equal to this. This is this is exactly what we did previously, and so that's why this works out the way that it does. Um, or this is just an example of this theorem working out. All right, and so that's why we're able to break this sum. Once you get rid of the sum from f equals 1 to k, the things that remain, you can factor it out like this. But this is just the thing, th this is just this sum being multiplied by itself. So it's the sum squared. All right, and now, so now what do we, what do we have at the end here? We have this, um, what is the complexity of this? Uh, on the inside here, we have this sum and we multiply this, or um, this sum goes from one to n, so there's n operations here. And then when you square that, squaring is just a single operation, so that doesn't add any complexity. Um, and then we also have this other thing here, which is also a sum from one equals n, so that sum from one to n, so that also has complexity order n. So this entire thing on the inside here is order n complexity. And because we're taking the sum from 1 to k, um, we multiply that complexity by k. So that's why we get complexity of order a uh, big O of k times n. The k comes from this sum, and the n comes from here and from here. Um, and the, really, the thing that really um, makes this work is this factorization from here to here that gives us the square term. Because... Um, being able to square this term takes this sum from n squared complexity to n complexity. And so that's massive. I, it, it's, it's really mind blowing that not like this is, this is just sort of like a, um, this is sort of like a, a simple algebraic, um, property, but the fact that it is so like, 
useful in a real world sense is really fascinating. Um, Cause even here, like you, um, like if you look at this, if you, if you just, um, yeah, if you, if you just, you just, you just add up n things and then you square it. And that's the same thing as having to do something n squared times. It's just so much easier. Like being able to add up these terms and then square the number you get is so much easier than having to write out all of these terms here. All right, so that is why we get linear complexity. Is there anything else I wanted to talk about there? No. Um, but the next thing I wanted to talk about is coming up here. Um, so here we talk about, they, they talk about some of the different ways that these models can be used. Um, so here the, the, the target um, uh, that we're trying to predict is just a rating from one to five. And that's an example of regression um, where it's, this is just like a number that you're trying to predict. Um, you can also do this as a binary classification. So like the sign of this is used. Um, so if you want to classify things into like one group or another group, then one group you, you can classify as one group when these targets are greater than zero and the other group when they're less than zero. Um, and then you can also do ranking, but that's a little bit more complicated. Um, yeah, and my understanding is that like binary classification, for example, I think when I see examples of factorization machines and um, like used in Netflix, I think I've seen examples of it actually used like um, for actually deciding which um, which items to show to users, I believe, but I could be wrong on that. Um, but anyways, this just shows that this is just an example and there are plenty of different types of models that you could use here.